Saturday. Uh, this meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act and adequate notice of this meeting is required, is required by law. Certain portions of it may be closed to the public for the purpose of personnel and or other matters as outlined in the Sunshine Law. Decisions made and discussed in the closed session will be made known to the public at a later time. All contracts awarded by mayor and council must comply with the affirmative action requirements of PL 1975C127. Fire exits are located in the directions I'm indicating. If you're alert for fire, <laughs> hello, please move in a calm, orderly manner to the nearest smoke-free exit. Notice the members of the governing body and borough staff. Any use of electronic devices during this meeting shall be used solely for the purpose of borough business and any communications are subject to the Open Public Records Act. Andrew, please call the roll. Councilman Petrosky. Here. Councilman Connolly. Here. Councilman Johnson. Here. Councilman Cigarella. Here. Councilman Levina. Here. Councilman Paloma. Here. Mayor Cigarella. Here. All present mayor. Um, and please lead us in the opening prayer following the pledge of allegiance. Eternal God, grant us thy help in all our duties and perplexities. We ask for thy guidance. Give us thy protection in our dangers and sorrows. Grant us thy peace. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Look. It came, I, yeah, I know. It came out so good. So that's what the one, uh, there are no communications uh, uh, this evening. I'm going to give this to, uh, we do have a proclamation. I'm going to give this to Pico. Um, unfortunately, it looks like he couldn't make it tonight. Um, but if you'll notice, um, Joseph Cigarello Sr., God rest his soul, would be proud. He was really upset with me about how blank and stark the walls were after we got rid of the carpet there. Um, and we've had, uh, so Pico Reynoso is a local artist. Um, Pam has done the uh, local arts festival over the past couple of years. These were donated uh, in memorial for 9-11 and then obviously commemorating the Borough of Rosal Park by Pico Reynoso. Um, they were in the library before the renovation. Um, there was a little bit of a kibosh about who, where they would fit within the new library. Um, and I said, what a great way to kind of fill our backdrop um, with Pico's excellent work. So I think it blends in really nicely uh, with the beautiful orange that we have <laughs> all over. Um, but it's certainly an upgrade over the uh, stark white. So thank you, Pico, if you're watching. Um, thank we'll you, make sure Pico. to give you the proclamation. And the maroon carpet. <laughs> was, oh, and the maroon carpet. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's like things living in that. There's like a Petri dish going on. <laughs> um, but that'll get solved hopefully soon enough. But big upgrade visually. So, and uh, great job, Andrew, for getting this done. And on the black. Good. Classy. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to approve meeting minutes pending corrections? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 May I have a motion that bills and payrolls be not read and passed for payment? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. May I have a motion to open the public portion on agenda items only? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. If you'd like to come up and speak, please uh, come forward. And the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Uh, Cindy Mago, 433 Walnut Street. Yes. Uh, I just had a question on the consent agenda, number 143.22. Yep. Uh, I was just curious, it says increase by 20,000. Yep. It's basically doubling it. Yeah. I'm just curious what the reason is. Did we have more work or what the reason? Yeah, so in general, um, this year we've started to implement, so we've only had one engineer in the past, right? Um, this is Negley Engineer. Uh, this year for the first time we have a borough engineer and we have a special projects en engineer. So Negley has stayed on as a special projects engineer. Um, and Collier's Mazer has been, or just Collier's now, has been brought on as our borough engineer. To be frank, this is the first time we've had this situation, so I think the $20,000 was our best guess at what we think it would cost. So it's basically $20,000 to each one? No, oh, no, 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 no. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, I think our stipend to Negley was in the $35,000 range last year? Uh, it was 21000 Was it what, 21000 Okay, got it. Yeah, so, um, this is, yeah, I mean, it's more than that. Uh, so this isn't automatically saying that it's gonna be 41,000 this year. It's just we're anticipating based on the amount of work that we're doing, so on and so forth, that it could go up to 41,000. So it's uh, just a little bit of a difference. I mean, I think, to be frank, there's, God, I say that all the time on the day, so I really need to just buff it out of my vocabulary. Um, 
But given not only just the developments going on in town, but also the public works that we've been having going on, you see all the street paving and so on and so forth, um, we just had a lot more engineering needs, right? Flooding issues have been part of that too, so. Yeah, we're anticipating to spend more this year okay. on engineering. Got it. So, okay. Yep. So it was just basically a difference from last year's. We took a best guess based on last year. Okay. And we're finding that we're probably going to spend more. Now. Yeah. Okay. And we also haven't fully just, and I don't want to take up all your time to get anything else, but we haven't formally adopted a budget yet. So again, this is us kind of fiddling around in the dark until we figure out how much we're actually going to spend this year on all these things. Okay. So. All right. Thank cool. you. Yep. Anybody else? Janine? Not yet. Cool. Not yet. All right. Good. We can down here. Okay. Um, uh, may I have a motion to close the public portion on the agenda items only? So move. Second. All in favor? All right. Uh, uh, reports of departments. I think we only have Andrew here. Anything you want to? I mean, the, the only thing that I will note for everybody here and we'll everybody is that the municipal complex will be closed tomorrow, with the exception of the uh, police department for essential services uh, due to the construction project that will start tomorrow. We are anticipating milling tomorrow uh, all throughout this parking lot. It will be closed uh, probably tonight once everybody leaves, and at 7 a.m. tomorrow they're going to start milling. Maybe some paving tomorrow, definitely paving on Saturday, striping on Saturday and Monday, and hopefully we'll have a new parking lot. Uh, may I have a motion to accept the written reports of departments as submitted? So move. Second. All in favor. Uh, uh, Andrew, please reorder this number 2685 by title. Yes, Mayor. Ordinance 2685 is an ordinance for second reading and public hearing and ordinance amending Chapter 7, Section 40, Subsection 1, Paragraph C of the Code of the Borough of Russell Park, entitled Municipal Parking Lot Number 1. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion to approve ordinance no Oh, no, wait. May I have a motion to open the public hearing on ordinance number 2685? So move. Second. Um, Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Anybody would like to come up and speak specifically on this ordinance, you may do so now. Okay, uh, I'm seeing no one. May I have a motion to close the public hearing on ordinance number 2685? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. May I have a motion to adopt ordinance number 2685? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Andrew, please call the roll. Councilman Petrosky? Yes. Councilman Connolly? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Yes. Councilman Rabina? Yes. Councilman Bullock? Yes. Six votes in the affirmative, Mayor. The ordinance is adopted. Uh, Andrew, please read ordinance number 2686 by title. Yes, Mayor. Ordinance 2686 is an ordinance for introduction of ordinance amending chapter 27, section 6, subsection, subsection 3 of the Code of the Borough of Russell Park entitled Imposition of Charges related to sewer charges. Uh, okay. Uh, may I have a motion to approve ordinance number 2686 for introduction and fix the date for second reading? And public hearing as June second, twenty twenty two. So moved. Second. Great discussion. Andrew Cole roll. Councilman Petrosky. Yes. Councilman Connell. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Councilman Sigarella. Yes. Councilman Rabina. Yes. Councilman Bulama. Yes. Six votes in front of Mayor. The ordinance is introduced. All matters listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and non controversial by the council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the governing body so requests. In which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its formal sequence on the agenda as part of the general orders. Andrew, please read all resolutions on the consent agenda by title. Yes, Mayor. Resolution 137.22 is appointing Kimberly Brown to the position of control person and assistant zoning officer. Resolution 138.22 is appointing Kimberly Brown to the position of fire protection clerk. Resolution 139.22 is authorizing the hanging of the two sided banner in Michael J. Morey Park, advertising the 2022 Feast of St. Anthony and the placement of five lawn signs advertising the 2022 Feast of St. Anthony on any borough property without restriction as it pertains to location to be placed no sooner than two weeks prior to the event and to be removed the day after the event. Resolution 140.22 is authorizing the tax collector to cancel second quarter 2022 property taxes and issue a prorated refund of first quarter 2022 property taxes in connection with an eligibility clarification of a 100% disabled veteran property tax exemption issued to 810 Willis Place Block 406, Block 12 of the Municipal Tax Map. Resolution 141.22 is authorizing the tax collector to issue a prorated refund of second quarter 2022 property taxes in connection with an eligibility clarification 
of a 100% disabled veteran property tax exemption issued to 11 East Roselle Avenue, Block 701, Lot 32 of the Municipal Tax Map. Resolution 142-22 is authorizing change order number one to Granada Construction Corp for the project 2021 NJDOT Road Program improvements to Valley Road in the amount of $60,595.35 increase to reflect the total contract amount of $373,000. $729.45. Resolution 143-22 is authorizing a $20,000 increase to the professional service contract with Collier's Engineering and Design Inc. as borough engineer for the year 2022, reflecting a revised contract amount not to exceed $41,000. Uh, so I'm going to pull 142-22 to end up want to pull anything else? 143-22. Okay. Uh, I have a motion to approve the resolutions remaining on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, may I have a motion to adopt 142-22? So moved. Second. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, just real quick, so Andrew, uh, this looks like a big number to jump, but we obviously got a grant for this. I just want to make sure, so this is basically taking full use of the grant and making sure that we get the most out of our grant dollars. Is that right? Right. So we bid out the scope of this project. Um, we did expand the scope somewhat. Um, and I know this was a project near your council for finance. Board, uh, we expanded it to include additional sidewalks, so uh, making that area more walkable. It also included some um, traffic control, um, not, not least of which was um, speed humps. Uh, two were placed on Valley Road. Uh, both of those items uh, were, were and are eligible for NJDOT reimbursement. We did receive a grant mayor, as he noted, um, so this does maximize the amount of grant funding we can use. It seems like a big number. Uh, quite honestly, when this was bid out and we got the uh, bid award amount, um, it was well under what we had budgeted <laughs> and well under what we had expected. So this number, though it is a large change order, uh, it was put to good use and it was funded predominantly by uh, state funds. Yep, just thought it was worth noting. And I think, Jay, kudos um, trying to make those dollars work and make it a little bit safer. Thank you, appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Uh, okay, any further discussion on that? Andrew, please call the vote. Councilman Petrosky. Yes. Councilman Conway. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Councilman Cigarella. Yes. Councilman Levina. Yes. Councilman Bologna. Yes. This is supposed to be permanent. The resolution is adopted. Uh, may I have a motion to adopt resolution 143 22? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Yes. So, may I say thank you for, um, you know, giving the information on that? But can Andrew um, expand on what you had said? Because I had sat with Andrew and Andrew explained it to me. Um, a little bit more, so just to be a little more transparent with us yeah, like, sure. on how we're using the engineer and all that so that our residents can know. Sure. So the the we we anticipated going into this year uh, paying more for engineering. Um, part, and part of that is, as we spoke about, uh, we're expanding the services of engineering, right? So there's every week uh, this municipal engineer is in Borough Hall, and when I say in Borough Hall, he's not honestly necessarily in Borough Hall. We've had a myriad of Sanitary sewer issues, probably more than we ever had in recent history. Um, he's out on the he's out on the job, right? He's getting the call. He's out on scene. He's talking to residents. He's following up with residents. Um, the engineering services have expanded this year, and obviously that comes with a cost. Now, um, as we spoke about transparently, the rate uh, that Collier's charges is higher than the rate that Neglia charged. Um, with that said, um, you kind of get what you pay for, right? Um, so you have this additional follow-up, you have this additional touch point between the residents and the members of the governing body and a presence in Borough Hall that we didn't have before. So while the cost did go up, uh, so did the services. As an administrator, we can tell everyone um, the costs have gone up. This is probably not the last increase we've seen this year uh, for our engineering costs, um, just because of the amount of issues that we're taking on um, and trying to solve. Uh, but I am very happy with the services uh, that Collier's has provided in this pally through the first quarter of this year. Um, some of those services came to light at the last council meeting. Um, uh, we passed, I believe it was four or five ordinances, um, and that's a product of kind of what they've seen and felt throughout the town during the first quarter of their work here. Um, so again, yeah, it, it is definitely an increase. It's something that we did anticipate, uh, but we are getting additional services. So. Again, you get what you paid for. And they're in the office on Wednesdays um, all day long. So so the council has has access to them, so it's a little bit different than what we I just wanna just I just wanna say so it's not always I just in case anybody hears this, it's not always Wednesdays, right? So they try to mirror the days that 
they're already going to be here, say, for a land use board meeting, a DRC meeting. They try to maximize their time here so that it's not an additional charge for them to travel here or something like that. So they, they'll, they do publish their schedule. It's upstairs. Um, we're going to do a better job about putting that schedule out in case there's any meetings. But um, again, yes, they're, they're here. Yeah. I understood. I just wanted it so that the residents could understand a little bit better. No, I think it's, a, it's, it's good to highlight. I'm glad there's discussion about it. I mean, I think it's one of those areas where um, we, yeah, I think increment, incrementally, Roosevelt Park's always kind of done drips and drabs of infrastructure work. I think you've even seen this year, uh, partially uh, through, I think, bolstering DPW leadership, but also partially because of what we've invested in from our engineering. You know, we just get things done a little bit quicker. Perfect example is, you know, uh, Jay, going back to it again, going back to the fifth ward, you know, we've had this stagnant water issue, you know, John's been Johnny on the spot for that. Um, and it's a level of response we just haven't had in the past. So actually, even if it was, when we put out our RFP last year, we put in that it was going, to, we were gonna request office hours. So even if we had maintained Neglia, we knew the Neglia costs were gonna go up somewhat, you know, knowing that it's an area we were looking to invest, so. Any further discussion? Okay. Uh, Andrew Holbrook. Councilman Petros. Yes. Councilman Connolly. Yes. Councilman Johnson. Yes. Councilman Sigmarello. Yes. Councilman Robina. Yes. Councilman Colo. Yes. Six votes in the affirmative. The resolution is adopted. Cool. Uh, okay. Uh, reports of borough council and committees. The council president. So let's start off. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I'm going to send my condolences out to Robert Poguero family, Peter Vives, Sal Babachi, Ova Burnett, and Mary Ann Savannah uh, Mychek, which was a 1972 graduate of Roosevelt Park High School. Uh, May 11th, I attended the uh, uh, first meeting in about two years, uh, the historical meeting. So hopefully they're in the process of opening it up um, uh, they were talking maybe the summertime, but it might be September, but I will keep everyone informed. Uh, but uh, at least we got the ball rolling. Um, same night, uh, I had the recreation meeting, uh, winding down to the end of the year, uh, you know, wrestling, basketball, soccer, I mean not soccer, uh, they got volleyball now, uh, basketball, so. Uh, it, you know, everything went, is going well there, and uh, again, the uh, Anthony Sigmarello Youth Center is gorgeous. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of people compliment it. Uh, uh, last night, I attended the Fire Department Memorial. Uh, again, a very sad, uh, I think it's a sad, because a lot of the people that were mentioned that have passed away, I, uh, growing up in this town, and, uh, you know, I uh, knew, knew a lot of them. So, uh, but uh, uh, I want to thank, uh, you know, former chief, my uh, councilman, Lord Singer, he was there and, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't as big turnout as it used to be, but uh, I, it still, uh, it did mean something, you know, knowing the, uh, growing up in this town, seeing their names uh, like that. Uh, today I had the joint sewer meeting. Uh, uh, they. Basically, it was about ordering parts and or, or ordering some furniture. And then they had a discussion if, if they're going to meet in July and August. Uh, so we came up with uh, the one uh, uh, council person, I think she was from uh, Irvington, said, why don't we see if we need to meet in July and August. So we will know next meeting, uh, which is in June, if we're going to meet uh, in uh, July and August. Uh, on the 30th of uh, May is the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, it starts at 10. Um, you're going to line up starting at 9 o'clock. Uh, after the parade and ceremony, there will be refreshments at, at, after the parade at the Casano Center. On June 4th is the Pride Flag Raising Ceremony, uh, 12 o'clock at the library. Uh, the guest speaker will be uh, Commissioner Rebecca William, who is the chairman of the commissioners, and uh, there will be ice cream social 
afterwards. And uh, if you need to get a hold of me, you can get me at Jay Petrosky at RoselleFark.net, uh, 908-666-7821, and that's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we'll go, Jody, you want to go next? Sure. Thank you. On May 14th, I attended the second annual Savvy Cycling Skills Clinic and Helmet Giveaway. The event was well attended and organized, um, enjoyable and educational at the same time. Thank you, Jay. On May 17th, I had the honor and privilege of sitting on the Eagle Board Review for Christopher Lee and Percy Fabian LaRosa. I want to congratulate these two very impressive young men on becoming Eagle Scouts. Only 4% of members in Scouts achieve the rank of Eagle Scouts, e Eagle Scout. It takes a lot of perseverance, consistency, and integrity to achieve this, and I'm super proud of both of you. I'm sure you, be, you will both be an inspiration to those that follow you in Boy Scout Troop 56 of Roselle Park. The New Jersey Motor Vehicle Commission will be coming to Roselle Park and will be located at the Michael Morey Gazebo Park on East Grant Avenue from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Dates will be made available for the months of May through November. Agency on Wheels offers driver's licenses, real IDs, license plates, non-driver's identification cards, placards, registration, and examination permits. Please check the Borough of Roselle Park Facebook page for more information or contact the Santa Community Center at 908-245-0666. Roselle Park Veterans Memorial Library would like to remind everyone if you need an important document notarized, you can meet me, you can meet with Miss Maria on Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. by appointment. Some exciting programs to look forward to are digital literacy certification, a free computer training class, and free English conversation classes on Thursdays, 11 a.m. to noon. Our library is having a library logo contest and it's open to residents of all ages. Keep your eyes out for our summer reading program, which begins in June. Um, join us on June 2nd at 6 p.m. for a flute recital of classical music of Northern India performed by performed on a bamboo flute. Summer hours will begin on the week of June 12th. That's Monday and Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and the library will be closed on Saturdays. This month's regularly scheduled board meeting was canceled and our next meeting will be on June 15th. If you'd like more information on programs running in the Roosevelt Park Veterans Memorial Library, you can call the library at 908-245-2456 or go to the borough website and click on the link that will bring you to the library's webpage. And I have one last minute one from, from the library that there's going to be penguins at our library. What's on penguins on June 16th, the penguin pointers. So if that's going to be by appointment at 5 p.m. and 5.30 um, p.m. So, and there's a limited amount of appointments that can go. So. I was just saying, mayor's good. <laughs> I already got mine. <laughs> On May 5th, I attended the Environmental Commission Committee meeting at the Sound Center. The grand opening of the community garden was on May 14th. The committee is seeking volunteers for the Shade Tree Subcommittee, the Green Team, and the Community Garden. Just a reminder from the committee, if you have a borrowed tree in front of your house, please call the Department of Works or your council person to care for it. It is unlawful for a homeowner to alter a borrowed tree. If you would like to get involved or in contact, you can go to the committee's Facebook page, Russell Park Environmental Commission. Yeah, I was in contact with Anthony Trezor from the Municipal Alliance. Mr. Trezor reported fifth grade lead, which is law enforcement against drugs, is the current program running. The officers are doing a great job and are almost complete with this year's curriculum. Mr. Trezor attended the County Municipal Alliance meeting this last week. He reported that he applied the for funds totaling about $3,000, and if we receive these funds, we'll be able to bring back all of our middle school programs and one high school program. The programs that would return will be a vaping intervention program for students and parents and a program on making healthy choices for the middle school health classes. Mr. Trezor reached out to me asking for help in finding a member of the BOB Board of Education that would be interested in attending this meeting that could assist with this meeting. I contacted Sue Carlstrom, and she accepted. We'll be having an in-person meeting on May 24th, and Mr. Treza invited the Regional Health Coordinator to guide us on how to run programs with little to no cost. This, the Roosevelt Park Small Business Network, um, as a small business owner, I understand how important it is to work with other small businesses in our community. Therefore, every fourth Tuesday of the month, we'll be having a meeting from 7 to 8. 
for, for owners of businesses in Russell Park to work together, support each other, and open a line of communication from the businesses to the town. Every month the meeting will be hosted by a business in our community. This month's meeting will be hosted by Frenchie's Tavern located at 545 West West Avenue on Tuesday, the 24th of May. Okay, and um, Mary Moretta's Carl Hokinson stopped in my business today to drop off the green light bulbs to place in the outdoor lace to memorialize our fallen soldiers for Memorial Day. If, uh, if you want one, you can stop by my shop, which is located at 210 Chestnut Street, Joe and Jody's Barbershop, and pick one up. Um, and if you need to get in contact with me, you can email me at jbalumbo at rosalpark.net or call me on 908-514-5027. Thank you for allowing me to start. Thank you, Jody. Um, Councilman Lawrence, just to take an here. Okay, short and sweet. I also attended the 83rd. Sorry. That's right, 83rd <laughs> fire water <laughs> service. Um, like the Councilman Petrowski says, uh, uh, I'm starting to see that people have left, uh, you know, passed away, but not wood. It, it's, uh, we haven't had a fatality in our firefighting service. So, um, anyway, I'm also I'm dealing with a little problem at the baseball field with lack of power for lights in the back shed. Uh, we're progressing on that with PSC and G and uh, the local uh, uh, electrical vendor. Hopefully, tomorrow to get the lights back on. Um, Jody, thank you, uh, the 24th, for making a good, good pizza with vinegar and peppers. That's my favorite. Uh, this Tuesday coming up. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to put up like, so they got rated like the third best, I think I've been joking around about this, like the third best sports bar yeah. in, in the state. But like it's a really five bar. Dive bar, yeah, but it's like a really specific number to just put up, like to put up like top five or top ten or something like that. Well, is your, is your, I, 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 I'll talk to him, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. let me finish my report. Uh, <laughs> so I'd like to thank the DPW on um, painting the curbs uh, downtown. Uh, hopefully, we can get the rest of the community and slowly progress. The weather's good to paint the curbs, and uh, Andrew knows about getting painted. Uh, it took him what eight times to get the Parking lot down downtown eight times, six oh, times. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we, we want to get the curb done. Yes. And uh, look, I harp on this every month. Uh, excuse me. Uh, but the last couple of weeks is one of my pet peeves with the leaves. I actually have four pages of uh, from the uh, you know from the construction department on, and 90% of it is weeds. Uh, grass, I'm sorry. Yes, grass. They look like weeds, and it's just, it's, I, I, in my opinion, it seems like the worst I could think of in how many years. Daniel Lines. Daniel Lines, but just, Big time. people just, so look, again, I've said this two weeks ago. If you have a scenario because of X, Y, or Z, your landscaper got sick, this or that, one more, please call the town hall, right? We're, we're looking for compliance, not to, to, to get rich on this, but. If that's what it takes for someone to uh, be fine and uh, get it done, I mean, I just I can't amaze, amaze some of the, I mean, I'm talking three feet in some of the areas, whatever, whatever. Um, I don't know, we'll get a couple of goats. But, uh, and I did find out, I didn't realize that if you were fine in 21 or 20, there is an increment of, uh, it's, I don't know, double or in particular, that if you're a habitual, uh, person that doesn't do it, the fines do go up. So cut your weeds and call in if you have an issue. And um, that's the end of my report. If you need me, Jay Signorella at Rosa Park down there. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, first word, Councilman, Greg Johnson. <laughs> You'll be off. <laughs> um, good evening, Mayor, Council residents. Uh, the following are meetings venues that I attended since the last mayor council meeting. First, on May 12th, I attended the Union County uh, American Legion meeting that was hosted by Post 60 veterans. I just wanted to publicly uh, congratulate Post 60's newly elected commander, Joseph Verdun, who is a Purple Heart recipient and a longtime resident of this community. The post will be in good hands and uh, his leadership will commence uh, June after the New Jersey State American Legion's convention. So I just 
want to say uh, congratulations to Joe. Uh, second, on May 14th, I too, my family uh, attended and helped supported Jay's uh, second annual Street Savvy uh, Cycling Clinic and Helmet Giveaway. What can I say? It was just a wonderful event by my colleague. Thank you, uh, Jay, for allowing my son and I to help you set up. And thank you for allowing me to enjoy this event with my family as a resident. I haven't done that in this community for some time, and I, and I, and I was just uh, taken away by uh, such a wonderful event. So thank you. Um, oh, and before I move on, I wanted to personally uh, thank Bob Cycling uh, Service that is located in Kenilworth for bringing my son's uh, bicycle back to life. Uh, there's a long story behind it. <laughs> I shared it with Jay, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, I just wanted to say uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, I appreciate that. Save us some money. <laughs> uh, now moving along, uh, community infrastructure updates. There are um, upcoming uh, improvements to Walnut and uh, Filbert Street that are finally coming to fruition since being adopted by Mayor and Council last year on October 7th, 2021. It is my understanding that Anticipated mobilization date for Walnut Street will commence sometime in mid-June, uh, which will include, uh, Andrew, you can correct me if I'm wrong, milling, paving, uh, a bit of curb repair, and new ADA ramps. That's correct. That's good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> also, please be mindful uh, that work on Union Road uh, should commence sometime shortly after the summer. I will follow up on uh, future dates in that regards. Um, Reports of graffiti near Sherman uh, Elementary School. Uh, there were several reports that were made. I personally contacted the DPW superintendent and he advised me that he would be addressing it in the near future. So please, if you see anyone vandalizing our beautiful borough, report it to the Roosevelt Park Police Department at 908-245-2300. Or if it's an emergency, of course, just call 911. Just to follow up on uh, the pedestrian rectangular rapid flashing beacon that will be installed on Route 28, also uh, known as Westfield Ave and Dalton Street due to a tragic death of a pedestrian simply trying to cross the highway. Uh, I was advised by NJDOT that all work orders are in and now NJDOT is just waiting on materials to be delivered from their vendor before electrical work can, can begin. This is a good project and I, um, and in hopes that this will be done before the next calendar school year. Hey, just real quick, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Andrew, did we have, I was gonna send an email, but uh, have we got anything from the DOT on the living zone in front of Meridia as well? Uh, we're talking past five No, not since, we, not since we sent the resolution okay. down. I'll send an email chasing it. Okay. Sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> uh, more commerce liaison update. As the Commerce Liaison for the 2022 Governing Body, we are bringing to you a web-based borough uh, business directory that will benefit both the residents and the local businesses, but wait, there's more. In efforts further uh, to help stimulate local businesses and after discussions with the mayor and direct development, we will be using the power of our social uh, media network to expose more businesses within our beloved community. I would like to formally announce that we will be bringing back awarding businesses of the month, but more importantly, by displaying those businesses on our Burwell Webs page and possibly and possible news feed with Volta, the electrical car monitor that the mayor, Burl, uh, uh, that's his baby, <laughs> uh, walk to this uh, fine borough uh, that will give businesses even more exposure and more uh, advertisement. And finally, just to kick it, it off, I wanted to announce next month's uh, local business uh, of the month to Carmen Taylor and uh, Dry Cleaners, who donated many masks during uh, the pandemic and was never recognized for it. Uh, we truly appreciate it at the American Legion. We also gave out toys in addition to the masks for people that wanted, and she made them all in different colors and used her own personal material. So I just think that uh, we should give her kudos and, and, and add her um, just to kick it off on the display. Yeah. And if you don't mind just me piggybacking on that, uh, Greg. So I think uh, we kind of paused the business of the month due to the pandemic. Um, 
I think uh, it was always nice to have business of the month here, um, but through the pandemic, we've actually, <laughs> so we, we made our first borough Facebook page like two years ago now. It has a decent following. Um, and, uh, you know, I was speaking with, uh, I was getting the cards over at Just Jubilant, and the idea came up, um, I think in Summit, what they do is basically do a borough or a city, I don't know what Summit is, a newsletter. Is it city? City of Summit? Uh, they do a newsletter, which we don't have yet, um, and they highlight businesses. Uh, we don't have a newsletter yet, uh, although we're thinking about doing one via email. Um, and basically, our business of the month will be a virtual business of the month going forward. Um, so every month we'll do, with direct development, a little spotlight pop. Um, you know, making sure that they're recognized and also making sure that they're recognized by the, you know, we have like 2,000 followers on our Facebook page now, so I think it's worth, you know, giving a little. Absolutely. Joe and Jody's can be business of the month. Well, I'll, I'll sponsor Joe and Jody's one month. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think, it's a, I think it's a good idea coming from Greg. So, yeah. sorry. No, thank you for your support in this, because um, I too, although I'm not a business owner, I do want to see what's best for the small businesses in our community. I love the convenience of being able to shop and not have to go four towns over to get the necessities that I want as well. So, you know. So. Um, also, um, I just wanted to. to Keep going. Two minutes. <laughs> I interrupted. You stole some of my minutes. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I'll make it quick. But um, also, I wanted to just uh, put out there that uh, Sherman had, uh, it's, it's, tonight is having a luncheon. Uh, at the American Allegiance, uh, organized by Nicole Motley. Uh, the American Allegiance t uh, uh, donated them the, the, the hall, so this way they can receive most of the donations of their monies uh, needed. Uh, so if you um, are watching this, please go out um, and, and reach out to Nicole or try to donate to Sherman Ave. It's for a good cause. Um, so we just, we, we support her uh, endeavor. Uh, also, I just wanted, uh, recognize Chris Lay as well. Um, that, that kid is on fire, like he's very mature. Um, and that is very, we just grateful and happy to be a part of his process of helping him to uh, actually obtain his Eagle Scout by him redoing our memorial that was uh, dilapidated there. So if, if you guys uh, want to take a look at his work, please stop by the Legions in the front. Uh, it, it's a wonderful job. He, he did like this glass type material which will uh, avoid uh, erosion or from the weathers and the elements. So uh, we, we just wanted to say kudos to him and, and applaud him and all his efforts and endeavors. And the sky's the limit for that kid. It's just in the tools. Yeah. yeah. Very young. <laughs> um, also, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Andrew, this is my last uh, uh, notation, community uh, notation. I've been receiving emails about noise complaints. I just wanted, uh, you know, everyone in the community just to be neighborly, be mindful. I know the summers are coming and we all want to enjoy ourselves and we should because we've been cooped up during the pandemic inside the, our homes. However, we still need to be neighborly and be mindful of uh, the borough's um, laws or ordinances regarding uh, the noise. So let's just try to be mindful of that. Uh, we also sent something out in the news, what, correct, Andrew? That's correct. It was mailed out, uh, I believe, on Tuesday. So it should be hitting doors. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll hopefully by this weekend. Thank you. Uh, lastly, please remember your voice matters. And at First Ward Council, I will always place the concerns of the residents within the borough of Roosevelt Park first. If you need to get in contact with me for any reason, you can email me at gjohnson at roosevelpark.net or call me at 908-303-1519. And Mary, that concludes my report. Thank you, Greg. Um, okay, we will next have... Uh, Councilman Ryan. Good evening, Mayor, and good evening, Roosevelt Park. On May 6th, I conducted a street light order to the Fifth Ward. Well, I didn't see any lights that were out. Um, if I missed any or any ward residents that light out, please email me at jrvine.roosevelpark.net with the poll number and the address nearest the poll so we can follow the PSE team. On May 9th, I was on a webinar on rain gardens and bioretention cells as I was researching green infrastructure and solutions to reduce flooding and pollution in our borough. Stormwater runoff flushes pollutants like motor oil, trash, fertilizer, pesticides, and animal waste contaminants into our waterways and is the cause of 90% of the pollution in our rivers, streams, and lakes. With 100-year storms coming in what seems like every few years, I posted information on my Facebook page 
on how residents, if they choose, can help reduce the demand on our stormwater systems. The borough is doing its part cleaning up catch and detention basins and working on ways to improve our aging infrastructure effectively and efficiently. In the fifth ward, personally, I'd like to see rain gardens at the lots on Jerome Street, the traffic triangle between Beachwood, Amsterdam, and West Lincoln, and downtown around municipal lots in the T section by Chestnut. It's low cost, improves aesthetics, and ser serves a vital purpose in resiliency. The average residential rain garden, for example, treats 25,000 gallons of runoff annually and removes 90% of nutrients and chemicals and 80% of sediments from rainwater runoff. In my post, I include more statistics and how to's. On May 14th, we held our second annual Street Saturday Cycling, uh, cycling Skills Clinic and Bike Public Giveaway. Even with a little rain towards the very end of the event, we had nearly 120 people and gave away all 85 homes that were donated to the borough. I'd like to thank all the families and residents who came out, our community children, parents, and families who took the time to come out, and our partners and volunteers who participated and supported this event, including Safe Kids Union County, Children's Specialized Hospital, Brain Alli uh, Injury Alliance of New Jersey, Paul Mikowitz and Andrea Silk from New Jersey Bike and Walk Coalition, and Bike and Walk Montclair, Bob and Donna Masucci from Bob's Bicycle Service, who hooked up Councilman Johnson, um, Union County Youth Services, and the volunteers from Union County Shout. Thank you to Jackie from the Rails and Trails Advisory Committee for event coordination, setup, and breakdown, Director Shaw, Superintendent Biamonte, uh, Roosevelt Park Police Department, and Officer Jessica Diaz for bringing the Batmobile of Bikes, uh, Councilman Baloma for coming out to support, and a big thanks to a big guy here on the day, who so between him and son Gabriel, helping with the muscle set up and stage gazebo park. Because of collaboration with great partners like everyone I just mentioned, this clinic continues to grow, and most of all, we're educating our community and keeping our kids and families safe on our roads, streets, and parks. Mayor, uh, you worked us worse than you. <laughs> no, we just Man, you off, I love it. It was great. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> oh, I did it. That's what it is. Okay, got it. <laughs> on the infrastructure, I attended the county's transportation advisory board meeting. There was a presentation on the September 11th Memorial Trail and the Elizabeth Fast Ferry out of the port, which will be going live in August. And it looks like Roosevelt Park is in front of the April on utility work as many of our neighboring communities have their line replacement projects underway. While there continues to be some work being done in the sections of, in sections of the Fifth Ward, specifically blocks between West Sumner and West Colfax, property restoration is currently being done with road restoration to commence this spring into fall on a number of our streets and avenues. Within the last week, real right, quick, Paul, has John heard anything back from the utilities on? No, no well, we we expect an answer imminently. So just to fill a gap, because I know there's been a little bit, sorry, I'll give you time for this, uh, but there's a, there's been roads that have been half paved in Roosevelt Park, in part due to utility work. Um, so what you'll see as a result of the fifth ward is we've sort of taken a pass to say, look, utility companies, you've done X amount of streets, X amount of miles of work, rather than doing half a road here, half a road there, half a road there, Let's do all of Colfax, for example, because Colfax is a disaster. And that's just one example. Um, so the plan is that we've submitted is to have them do a number of whole streets within the fifth ward where it's particularly bad. Um, and then those streets that remain, either they're not so bad and we'll get to them via, you know, our normal work or after additional work is done there. But, you know, trying to avoid the half street jobs as much as possible and, you know, make that dollar stretch to do full roads there, um, just to fill the gap. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Yep. Um, within the last week, I fielded a number of calls, texts, and emails from residents on issues ranging from potholes, tree donations, the driveway aprons, senior parking, code enforcement issues that I've been working with, and I appreciate the help and support from the team. Mayor Cigarella, our professionals, police department, DPW, in addressing these items for our constituents. On Monday the 16th, it was the Municipal Land Use Board meeting. I was there briefly to memorialize the resolution for the demolition and construction of the County Educators Federal Credit Union. And since uh, Class D zoning variances were needed, I was recused, though the board did grant preliminary and final site plan approval for 117 West Colfax Avenue, also known as Roosevelt Park Liquors and Foods, to renovate the first floor and expand the second floor for office use. As liaison to the Board of Health, we held our meeting here in Chambers on Tuesday, the 17th, and we discussed the uptick in COVID cases. While at this time the mask mandate is over and recommended in some instances, be mindful, 
CDC recommends staying up to date with vaccinations or boosters and continue frequent hand washing and social distancing. It's allergy season, so it may be difficult to tell whether or not someone has COVID. Every home in the U.S. is eligible for eight free, home, uh, free at home tests. If you want to order, visit special.usps.com forward slash test kits or call 1 800 232 0233. The state's seven day average for confirmed cases increased to 4,034 on Thursday this morning, up 26% from a week ago, and it's up 138% from a month ago. That's the highest seven day average since February 3rd. And as of Tuesday, the FDA has approved booster shots for children ages 5 to 11. Boosters are effective in reducing symptoms and keeping folks out of the hospital. Next Thursday, May 26, between 3 and 6 p.m., the first and second doses along with boosters will be offered free of charge by the Westfield Regional Health Department at their vaccine clinic in Westfield Town Hall, located at 425 East Broad Street. No appointments required. Walk-ins are welcome. If you have a loved one who's, who is homebound and requesting a dose or booster, the health department does have nurses conducting home visits at no cost. For information, please call the Westfield Regional Health Department at 908-789-4070. And I want to say thanks to Councilman Jody uh, for the light bulb, the green bulb. Thank you to all who have reached out to me with their concerns and for the opportunity to help. I can be reached at 862-236-019. Uh, my email is jrobine at roselpark.net. <coughs> and Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Collin? Uh, thank you, Ben. Um, just to remind everybody, um, um, I've been walking around the, the ward and also around other wards. Uh, we have an ordinance of grass cutting is starting to get out of hand. Um, in particular, I found like eight properties that were, I measured, maybe a foot and a half. I know there's a lot of dandelions and stuff out there, but please prune your lawns. If, and if you can't, you can contact me and I will you know, find a way to, to get that taken care of. Uh, other than that, uh, Memorial Day uh, is uh, May 30th. Uh, we are having a parade. I'd like to see everybody out there. The, uh, Troop 50. The Boy Scouts will be um, issuing flags out and uh, you know, along the street of the parade route. And um, let's have a good show. Support our veterans. Um, and. Um, Hopefully it'll be a great day, a cool day, cool day. And um, other than that, um, you can contact me by emailing me at mconnelly at roselpark.net. Thank you, man. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, okay, so I think that leaves just me. I'll actually have a little bit longer report than I normally do. I'll try and oh, keep the mute under an hour. Uh, I, uh, I normally don't do this, um, but I want to send my condolences to uh, Mary Jo Daniel, uh, resident of Roswell Park, who's a very dear uh, friend and family. I uh, went to school with two of her sons. Um, fortunately, uh, she passed away this past year after fighting a number of health issues. She's a really good spirit in the community, really good human being, um, lived close to me uh, growing up, lived close to me, my new place in Sherman, um, and she'll be very much missed. Um, uh, so my condolences to her family. Um, on a more positive note, uh, I want to highlight and congratulate uh, Casa del Rey, uh, which did their soft opening of their actual restaurant place. Um, a little bit of a difference in how uh, the prior iterations of used to be Solar Domino, used to be the castle. Um, it, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's always been beautiful, but it used to just be an event space. They are actually opening up a proper restaurant. They did their soft opening. Now they have their full liquor license. They'll be doing their full opening. It's gorgeous. Um, they're struggling a little bit with parking, um, but I think they're underway getting some more adjacent parking in the area. Um, so my congrats to them. Uh, also really hard to see, I just started to see some of the work we're going on um, where Aldine Cleaners was, um, and everybody's been clamoring for a coffee shop in Rosal Park. Uh, there is going to be a cafe there. Um, I'm blanking on the name right now. I'm sure we'll do a nice ribbon cutting once it's there. Um, but it's going to be a florist slash cafe, and uh, some of the work that they've been doing is, is going to be really stunning, I think, once it's all said and done. So I'm really excited to see that addition. It's really nice front and center uh, when you come into the town. Um, so kudos to both of those uh, for investing in Roselle Park. Um, front of mind for me is the budget coming up. Um, so over the past couple of years, we've had a really tight budget. Um, our goal is to do the same this year. Um, we are facing some headwinds this year. Uh, last year was recycling uh, costs going up. This year it is garbage. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so we've done our best to tighten our belts there. Uh, we don't have the award on for tonight, but I guess we'll probably have it on for the next meeting. Spoiler alert, the costs have gone up uh, to the tune of 35% year over year in terms of costs. Um, what we've tried to do to mitigate that is, um, unfortunately, I think it comes a little bit uh, at the cost of service, but you know, decisions have to be made. Uh, we used to do six downtown T-section pickups. Uh, now we're going to only do four um, in an attempt to try and stem some of the costs. Um, we're also going to have to break up the town into east side, west side. We're going to come up with a new schedule that coordinates with recycling. Um, but, you know, as we had to switch to dual stream with recycling, some of these things, uh, you know, it could have been 60% up year over year. Um, we did our darndest to only make it 35% year over year. Um, with all that said, uh, the issue is not closed for me, um, so I'm going to actively look this year um, at uh, options outside of our current contract with, with Roselli. I mean, um, unfortunately, once again, uh, we went out to bid. We only had one bidder. Um, we tried our darndest to get multiple bidders um, within the rules that there are, um, but I think there are other options including, you know, shared services, mostly shared services that we need to explore to potentially um, mitigate some of those costs because um, some of these are just unpalatable to me. A um, couple things that are also important coming up budget-wise are, are capital improvements. Um, so while I know Rosal Park looks like a big construction field at some points, um, I think you've seen the fruits of the labor and a lot of road work has been done. Uh, we have a lot of road work that will continue to be done. Um, but I think we really need to double down on our T-section. Um, we've done uh, some work repaving Chestnut Street. Chestnut Street looks great with the paving. The municipal lots look fantastic. Finally, the striping and numbering is correct. Um, we have working meters, which is a big win. Uh, all of these things add up to a much more coherent and clean downtown. Uh, I think the DPW has done a great job. Um, Councilwoman Belomo picking up some nice flowers, but uh, we actually had, so Andrew was out as one of the highlights of my year this year, um, getting quotes potentially for new meters. We had the conversation with the meter guy three years ago, and I think the, the gentleman said, you know, he's starting to see the vision come to fruition, and, you know, we had dead trees there three years ago, we have living trees now, we have a paved road now, we have striped sidewalks, and, you know, a little bit more coherent vision for the downtown. Um, it's really, really important to me that we, uh, we're not going to get investment there, I think, in earnest until we start getting our infrastructure right. So, uh, Jay teed it up a little bit. Um, I think we're going to try and get creative this year with using some of the American Rescue Plan funds uh, to do permeable sidewalks there uh, to help mitigate uh, a lot of the flooding that happens there. Um, that would include potentially rain gardens along Chestnut Street, which I think would be a nice visual addition. Um, and we can do that with American Rescue Plan money due to stormwater um, runoff, uh, we can use that for. Um, it just depends on how much we're waiting for quotes to figure out what we can do. Um, I had something else relevant to that, which is just escaping me, permeable sidewalks. We need to figure out the timing of it, um, but I think you know that and the electric car chargers are starting to you know, really make a coherent, uh, clean looking downtown. Um, I also want to get a fire truck this year. So once the EMS sales complete, coming, <laughs> we'll be able to buy a fire truck. Um, and uh, the last thing is, uh, it's really a burning passion of mine to try and get kids a new place to practice soccer. So we have great soccer teams in Roselle Park. Um, everybody beats up the mayor for it. It's actually part. Of, it's actually board of education property, but um, the the middle school field is basically just a big mud pit um, and. Uh, I really want to give the kids another place to practice soccer. Uh, so whether it's Hawthorne, whether we get creative with other sites, um, we put in for some grant money to get support there, um, but we need to figure out another place for kids to play. Um, it's just, it's a sad sight right now. Um, you know, seeing the little kids kick around soccer on, on dirt in, in the middle school field right now, it, it breaks my heart. Um, but yeah, all that within the lens of trying to keep a tight budget. Um, so we've kept pretty, uh, pretty conservative for the last three years and we'll continue to try and do so. Um, that concludes my report because I see I'm running out of time myself. Uh, Mayor Sig at RoselPark.net if you have any questions. Um, other than that, cool, good meeting. We'll open up the public portion. Mayor, good oh, quick. Yeah. Just, um, Greg Johnson gave a report on the construction on Filbert Street and Walnut Street and Andrew helped me out. So just, folks, just 
be patient. We had a good conversation. These are probably two of the tough, you know, <coughs> streets that we're going to pave, and we're going to try to uh, um, minimize, you know, construction equipment on the street and so on and so forth. But they're small streets. Yeah. So just be patient. I know Greg gave a report. I want to just follow up on that. Uh, look, uh, you got to go backwards and go forward. And at the end of the day, it'll look nice. So we'll try to give you plenty enough time when it's going to happen. And uh, I've always, as a firefighter, I try to minimize any kind of equipment in front of the house on the property. But there's so much you could do. We got to do what we got to do. But just uh, wait for the date and, you know, give it, give it a little time. Thank you. I believe uh, which uh, said after the uh, gas company uh, concludes work on Filbert, which will be mid-July, that hopefully these projects will be done fast and, and done end of August or beginning of September. I believe that's what. Yeah. So so the the Walnut Street project is going to commence sooner than that. It'll yeah. be it'll be mid June, um, and that'll be substantially complete within probably a week or two. Um, Filbert will be a little bit further behind because there is gas work that's going to happen there. They need to leave it a settlement period after that is done. So we're hoping by August, September for that one to be completed. Thanks. Cool. All right. Uh, may I have a motion to open the public portion on any subject? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to come up and speak. Please come forward to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Cool glasses, Christian Maker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Christian Maker, <clears throat> B36, Woodside Gardens, uh, be the Mayor and Council. Just a quick question, um, I know it was already discussed, um, but regarding the uh, resolution 142-22, will this um, help with further projects down the line? They love these glasses, aren't you? <laughs> oh, no, it's something else. What Will something help out with what project? So, resolution 142-22, is that going to um, expand to further projects down the line, or is this more so to alleviate costs from so, prior projects? So more more or less every year, DOT gives us some sort of support for infrastructure projects, right? So I think this year, is Union the DOT project we're doing? Union. Union Road. Yeah. Union Road, and there's a portion of, uh, I believe it's Union Road and Maplewood Avenue. Yeah. So long story short, while we don't get a ton of state aid for, for on the municipal side, um, that is one thing that we get pretty cons consistently. So, you know, what we've tried to do in recent years, because Route 28 is a state highway, we've tried to apply for state aid for those adjacent st or streets intersecting with it. Um, so, you know, this is just basically maximizing the grant for that year. Um, but yeah, we'll do another application this year, theoretically for DOT grants, and you know, hopefully get awarded some of that. But uh, this is more, yeah. That's, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Great, thanks, by the way, Lola, great. Thank you. Uh, maybe, and we still have some applications pending now. That's yeah, that's right. Actually, so. Yeah, yeah, we, we have we a back. Yeah, we're working on it. Yep, yep. Come on down. Good evening, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, members of council. Yes. I have two questions. One is- Our name and address, please. My name is Robert Nadasky. N-A-D-A-S-K-Y, 446 Henry Street. Yeah. I would have two questions. One, the, I think it's a Gordon Street bridge that they took it up. Yes, sir. Okay. Will that be replaced? Yes. Sir. Okay, so it's gonna take time. Yeah. A lot of time. Now, I could make one suggestion that we may, that the cost of those construction people have an officer at the Walnut Street uh, underpass because I came down that road this morning, uh, this afternoon, around 4.30, and it was, I mean, the traffic was backed up past the Assumption Church. Yeah, so, um, did you have another question, or do you yes, want to? Okay, go, why don't you ask your other question, I'll respond to both. Okay. Yes. The second question I have is why, <clears throat> and this has gone on for two, two years now, yeah. cats can roam around the yards all they want and do what they got, the, the dogs have to have this leash on them, and they, People have to pick up after the dog, which is, I, I believe, is the rest thing, best thing to do. But cats go all over the place. As soon as I put my garden in, okay, I have a cat that comes in and uses it as its litter box. And I've, kept, I've contacted my councilman. They've tried numerous things. I've tried, I spent over $100 for litter 
stuff and they put down. It didn't work. But I'm ready to put my garden in and I just want to know what can I do or what happens when these cats come. There's, and there's at least three, two. I know there's two, there could be more that come around and dirty my yard. So I keep my cats indoors. <laughs> the cats aren't mine. No, no. no. Um, so I, I only have, you have two minutes and 22 seconds left. You can either, if you have any other comments that's, or. That's my first question. Okay. I've been going through grids and this has been going on for a couple of years now. I know my councilman, I contacted him and he tried a couple of different things with the town uh, uh, animal control. Animal control. Yeah. Uh, and nothing happened. So can I, uh, let, me, let me grab this one. Cal, can you do me a favor? Can you just see if there's any other towns that do anything with regards to cat control? I know Union has well, a well, animal control. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we have, a, we have an animal control liaison too. I can kind of answer that. Okay, yeah. yeah there's uh, animal control. The only dilemma with animal control is, and I'm not recommending residents do this, they usually don't come out unless the animal is, cap like, is, is captured. Like, at, like, you have to kind of like contain the animal. I have <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just telling you. Maybe when you report it to law enforcement and they respond to the scene, maybe they may have to try to contain the animal. The the problem is if it's just roaming and they they don't have a contain, it's hard for them. To but I think the I think the macro level issue is is should we allow or should we do something to prevent the roaming of cats? We have a there. few volunteers that have been going out. Uh, looking for feral cats. I, I don't think it's. I was just gonna say. Are, are yeah. we talking about feral cats or? It's we feral about cats. Someone feral cats. Yeah. 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 They come into my yard and they do their business and. Because <laughs> yeah. 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 there's two. Because you have feral cats, which are just nobody owns them, and then you have to call animal control, and then you have to maybe something that's attacking. It's the feral cats. Yeah. There's something that can be done for feral. But I think cats. it's honestly it's the first time I'm hearing the issue. I think it's something we can look into, and at the the one that's in our control is whether or not it's a pet. Right. If it's a pet, we can control it somewhat. Well, it, no collars. Yeah. No collars. No, they, feral. they might be feral they cats. Then. One Henry Street across the back, across Henry Street, and up and over onto I guess it's Grand Up Ahead, right back and forth, and they're all over. There's two of them that I know. Of. So let us do some homework on it. So first, I'm hearing about the issue. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. And then I, we only have 20 seconds left, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Gordon Street Bridge. Okay. So Gordon Street Bridge, just to remind everybody, so it's an abandoned bridge is technically the way it's labeled. So that comes with the purview of the county. The county is rebuilding the bridge to the tune of $8 million. It is a nightmare uh, construction-wise there and, and traffic-wise. I've had a couple people reach out to it. Unfortunately, the SIN <laughs> and a lot of my colleagues in other towns have been noticing this. Um, Route 28 has just become a nightmare. Right in a lot of ways, um, right? There's just more people here. It's been forget about the new development. There's been a lot of development over the years in both Cranford and Garwood, and from end to end, there's a lot of traffic going on. Put aside the the construction for a second. Um, so I actually sent a letter to um, the DOT to ask for some relief in some way, um, because to be honest with you, a lot of our hands are tied in terms of like, could we do? Somebody came up with. Um, over at Locust, for example, there's no left turns allowed or right turns allowed on the light. So we temporarily allow a right turn at the light to help alleviate, you know, some traffic. We're beholden a lot to the DOT as to whether or not we can do that. So we have an outstanding request to the DOT. Um, but I think there's more that the state can do to help alleviate some of this. Um, we just need them to be a little bit more responsive. Um, I'm sure they have a lot on their plate, but that ask has already been sent up and we'll continue to escalate if needed. A hundred percent. And it's just inconvenient. Don't cross the road. Yeah. Affected by that. Because they can't get under yeah. the bridge. Unfortunately, your time's up, but we totally hear it, and we'll look to address. We'll continue to look to address. Thank you very much, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just make one point. Please. On the on the uh, the traffic issue today in particular, I know it's an ongoing issue. We all deal with it, unfortunately. Um, today in particular was bad um, because uh, our neighboring municipality, Roselle. Um, they had some significant issues at the Locust Street underpass, um, and their solution was to close the Locust Street underpass um, going into Roselle Park and then diverting that out in all of the different directions. So westbound, you would run into Gordon Street, which means you can't get anywhere. So people were diverted back eastbound, also hitting Locust Street again, not being able to go to Roselle Park, and going to Walnut Street, which became a complete nightmare, uh, which I was in. Um, and I was—I actually inquired with the chief of police today what happened that made it so terrible today. 
and it was that. It was a different traffic pattern that Roselle had implemented this morning um, and possibly throughout the day, and we communicated that, that can't happen again um, because either people were hitting Walnut Street and forced to make the left, or they were continuing east and going to Linden Road, which most people don't even know is there because it's a truck route. Um, so this warning was terrible, but again, I just wanted to note that in, in, in particular today was bad. Um, we hope that that's not replicated in future days. Anybody else? Okay. Name and address, please. My name is Michelle Arnold, and I'm known as the queen of, six, of the land called 612 Sheridan Avenue, and my preferred pronoun is Your Majesty. So all can call me Your Majesty. So um, there's a couple questions that I have. Um, one of them is that he spoke, um, you know, he was uh, encouraging people to get boosted and vaccinated. Now, because the FDA, uh, the uh, vaccines are only authorized for emergency use, uh, there are no safeguards for injuries. You know, so if somebody gets sick, they get an allergic reaction, if they die, if they get a permanent disability, there's no compensation because the drug companies aren't held responsible and it doesn't fall under the United States government vaccine injury program. So if Roselle Park is gonna be encouraging people to get this, and if somebody gets a vaccine based on the encouragement of the people of council and mayor of Roselle Park, are you gonna take financial responsibility for People. Because I know if I don't answer now, because um, if I like you could take a drug and I could take a drug, it could help you, but it could kill me. So I'm just curious. Um, and two, I just want to thank you so much for those bags. Um, I got I took advantage of both the plastic and uh, I mean the, the they're plastic. I think the like the 125 uses, the one that has Roselle Park printed on them. I don't think they're biodegradable, but at least I can use them for 125 times. And I also took advantage of the brown bags for the leaves. Um, so thank you so much. And um, so it's like, a, again, I was like doing some research and I hate research. I do not like looking things up, okay? But um, I did find, because you talked about all the sustainability, um, hemp is a great product. It takes 90 days to grow. It makes paper, it makes shoes, it makes bags, it makes all kinds of things. Bamboo, bamboo is also sustainable. You can make wood out of it. Like, Toothpicks, you can make houses, and, and they're all biodegradable products. Um, you know, so I just want to, um, you know, say that, and also, you know, and it's like, I don't know, I, government drama? You know, it's like a couple of years ago, no paper bags, it's bad, you gotta save the trees. Okay, then they're like, we forced everybody to use plastic. I was, I never voted for plastic bags, I thought it was a bad idea, and so now they're going, Paper, plastic bags are bad, like, duh, we knew that already. So now we're back to paper or bring your own. And once upon a time, my grandmother used to bring her own bag to the store, because that's what they did 100 years ago. And so we're right back there again, uh, which is like, fashion does come back around, right? Um, so, um, yeah, so, um, you know, one of the things that I know is like, uh, in life, it's like, if people want to solve a problem, they'll resolve a problem. If they don't want to, they just continue to have a problem. And I don't know, this. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Me too. With the <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it? I think that's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, we're excited about the, uh, I think the plastic bag thing is a net good for the environment, so I think it's a positive. I have bamboo to I have bamboo toothbrushes, yeah. right? So they are they're great. Their bamboo grows up we uh, like like super easy. I'll, I'll I'll defer to the borough attorney uh, for any potential financial implications on the so, I we create out more people. We don't worry about it. Well, yeah. what's, what's reported from Westfield Regional Health? Uh, AJ. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? I'm seeing no one. May I have a motion to close the public portion on, sub on uh, any subject matter? So I'll move. Sorry. Thank you. All in favor? Uh, All right. <laughs>
Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved it. You just kept talking. <laughs>